High up in the northern Sierra Nevada lies a mountain of beauty, geological wonder, and gold, the Sierra Buttes. This enigmatic mountain complex rises prominently above the surrounding area to a height of 8,591 feet above sea level and is home to some of the richest gold deposits in all of California. The largest gold nugget ever found in the state came out of this mountain a whopping 109-pound bad boy named Monumental, which was extracted from the Sierra Buttes mine on the south slope of the mountain in 1869. The Sierra Buttes have yielded over $1 billion worth of gold, making them one of California's richest mountains. Not only are the Sierra Buttes insanely well endowed in gold, they're also one of California's most interesting peaks from a geological standpoint, composed of a unique suite of rocks that formed hundreds of millions of years ago and hundreds of miles away from their current location. The Sierra Buttes shed light on the greater geology of Northern California beautifully, and I'm excited to share their story in this episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. Let's do it. The Sierra Buttes are composed of a large group of rocks known as the Northern Sierra Terrain, a suite of metamorphic rocks that originated as both sedimentary and volcanic units in ocean floor and island arc environments during the Paleozoic era, from the Cambrian through Devonian periods. Today, they are located on the western slope of the northern reaches of the Sierra Nevada, but during the Paleozoic, this accreted terrain moved south over a thousand miles to its current location. In the vicinity of the Sierra Buttes, the northern Sierra terrain is composed of two main subunits, the Shoe Fly Complex and the Sierra Buttes Formation. The Shoe Fly Complex outcrops west of the Sierra Buttes and is mainly composed of slate, schist, serpentinite, chert, and peridotite, representative of an ancient oceanic seafloor. This unit dates back to the Cambrian through early Devonian periods, from about 540 to 390 million years ago. The Shoe Fly Complex is quite important to the story of not only the Sierra Buttes, but to the entirety of Western North America, as it sheds light on the geologic history of the continent during the Paleozoic Era. Detrital zircon analysis of this unit suggests that the rocks that compose the shoe fly complex were formed in modern-day northwestern Canada, and were transported over a thousand miles south to their current location, roughly 370 million years ago during the late Devonian period. It is hypothesized that this unit was transported along a major left lateral strike slip fault that formed an ancient plate boundary within the passive margin of North America during the late Paleozoic. Perhaps surprisingly, a suite of rocks that I've dived into in previous videos, the Roberts Mountain Alokthon of Northern Nevada, is intimately connected with the Shoe Fly Complex. The Roberts Mountain Alokthon is famous for being the quote-unquote cap rock of Nevada's world-class carlin-type gold deposits, as Nevada's carlin-type gold is deposited in the lower plate of the Roberts Mountain Thrust, a late Devonian aged thrust fault that was responsible for emplacing the Roberts Mountain Alokthon above underlying sedimentary units in Nevada. In geology, an alokthon is a unit of rocks that currently outcrops in a different location than they were formed in, having been transported to their current location via tectonic processes. It is hypothesized that the Roberts Mountain alokthon and Shoe Fly Complex were formed in roughly the same environment and geographic area within modern-day northwestern Canada, but were transported south along separate sinistral faults associated with the same ancient plate boundary. While the two units are intimately related, there are key differences between the two. The Roberts Mountain Alokthon is outcropped further east than the Shoe Fly Complex is, and it's not metamorphosed. Conversely, the further west Shoe Fly Complex was intensely metamorphosed, which we'll talk about in a minute. Anyways, both the Shoe Fly Complex and Roberts Mountain Alokthon were going on their merry ways down south when something odd happened. By the time the two units got to their current locations, in California and Nevada respectively, they just stopped moving south. Why? 
Well, it's hypothesized that a stable embayment in the crust of the passive margin in modern-day central Nevada halted further southward movement of these terrains, initiating transpression. This changed the tectonic regime from a transform plate boundary to a convergent plate boundary during the late Devonian period, and kicked off a mountain building event known as the Antler Orogeny. During the Antler Orogeny, the Roberts Mountain Alokthon was thrusted over older Paleozoic marine rocks in northern Nevada. This occurred along a fault that was generated called the Roberts Mountain Thrust that can still be seen in northern Nevada and, as aforementioned, is a critical geologic structure to Nevada's Carlin-type gold deposits. Further west, in the vicinity of the Sierra Buttes, this compression generated a volcanic arc similar to modern-day Japan as subduction of oceanic crust beneath the passive margin of North America was initiated. Volcanism commenced from the late Devonian to the early Mississippian periods, ejecting andesite, dacite, and rhyolite. These volcanic rocks that were attributed to this arc composed the Sierra Buttes formation. The core of the Sierra Buttes are composed of erosion-resistant rocks from this volcanic arc, mainly metamorphosed andesite and dacite. You could say that the Sierra Buttes are an extinct volcano from 363 million years ago, or at least that they're composed of rocks from an extinct volcano of that age. A 2020 paper by Powerman et al. in the journal Geosphere records an average age of 363 million plus or minus 7 million years of tuff from the Sierra Buttes formation via uranium lead dating. The Sierra Buttes formation lies unconformably above the shoe fly complex, representative of volcanic arc construction during the Antler Orogeny. At this time during the height of the Antler Orogeny, the shoefly complex was sucked into the newly formed subduction zone, highly metamorphosing the oceanic crustal units into slate, schist, serpentinite, and peridotite. This compressive tectonic regime of the Antler Orogeny lasted about 30 million years, from 370 to 340 million years ago. The Sierra Buttes formation and shoefly complex would be fully accreted onto the western margin of North America roughly 100 million years after the Antler Orogeny, during the Permian to Triassic aged Sonoma Orogeny, which dates back roughly 270 to 245 million years ago. Accreted terrains of the Klamath Mountains were also added to North America at this time, and in fact, there is geological evidence that suggests that the Shoefly Complex of the Northern Sierra terrain and the Trinity and Wairika terrains of the Klamath terrains originated as the same unit and were separated during the Devonian. This evidence comes from Ediacaran aged tonalite blocks in both units that share identical geochemistry. Tonalite is a type of felsic plutonic igneous rock, characterized by a high amount of plagioclase and quartz. The Sierra Buttes formation forms the core of the Sierra Buttes, while the Shoefly complex makes up the southern and western margins of the Buttes. Now that we've talked about how the Sierra Buttes were formed, let's talk about how they gained their status as one of California's richest mountains in gold. The Sierra Nevada are famous for their world-class gold deposits, which are textbook examples of a specific type of deposit known as an orogenic gold deposit. Orogenic gold deposits are formed during orogenies, or mountain building events, and the orogenic deposits of the Sierra Nevada were largely formed during the Mesozoic era. This was when the west coast of the US largely became a subduction zone, building the Sierra Magmatic Arc, compressing pre-existing exotic terrains that were added onto North America during earlier orogenies, such as the northern Sierra terrain, and accreting additional exotic terrains such as the coast range Ophiolite to the western margin of the continent. Contrary to popular belief, the gold deposits of the Sierra Nevada are attributed to the metamorphic suite of rocks on the western slope of the range, rather than the granodiorite of the core of the Sierra. This suite of gold-bearing metamorphic rocks is colloquially known as the Western Metamorphic Belt. As accreted terrains were sutured onto the western margin of North America, they underwent metamorphism at moderate temperatures and high pressures. 
This metamorphism transformed the chemistry of the minerals in the accreted terrains, allowing for the inclusion of water into certain minerals and the percolation of hydrothermal fluids throughout the rock units. At depth, these hydrothermal fluids incorporated quartz, pyrite, and gold into their hot chemical soup. The quartz was largely derived from the subduction zone at the time of orogeny, while the pyrite and gold was derived from somewhere else. If you remember, the northern Sierra terrain largely originated as oceanic crust. This origin story holds true for the vast majority of the accreted terrains of the western metamorphic belt. While subduction zones build continental crust, oceanic crust can really only be created at mid-ocean ridges. Mid-ocean ridges are divergent plate boundaries where two plates are moving away from one another, a modern example being the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. As this happens, magma surfaces and volcanism commences at the bottom of the ocean, where the two plates are separating. A sizable portion of submarine volcanism associated with mid-ocean ridges comes from a submarine type of volcano known as a black smoker, which is a specific type of hydrothermal vent. Hydrothermal vents are defined as fissures on the seabed where water that was geothermally heated by magmatism discharges. Black smokers are characterized by the ejection of black, sulfur-rich minerals. Sometimes, large amounts of gold are ejected in conjunction with these sulfides from black smokers, and this was indeed the case for the accreted terrains of the western Sierra Nevada. As the gold-rich black smokers ejected their materials during the Paleozoic when what would become the accreted terrains of the western Sierra Nevada was newly formed oceanic crust, the gold from the black smokers settled into this newly formed oceanic crust. Pyrite was also incorporated into the oceanic crust from the gold-rich black smokers. It's important to note that the gold and pyrite in this crust was widely disseminated, and it took a complex array of tectonic processes to concentrate the gold in this oceanic crust. As the millions of years went by, the gold-rich oceanic crust made its way towards North America. Eventually, large amounts of this oceanic crust were accreted onto the western margin of the continent via several different tectonic regimes, and large-scale metamorphism occurred in these terrains, transforming them into slate, serpentinite, schist, peridotite, and eclogite. Additionally, large fault systems such as the Malonis Fault were generated as each terrain was stitched onto the continent, and these fault systems would prove critical to gold deposition later on. This brings us back to our hydrothermal fluids. As aforementioned, the hydrothermal fluids associated with the accretion of these terrains incorporated quartz, pyrite, and gold into its hot chemical soup at depth. This concentrated the widely disseminated gold in the accreted terrains. We learned earlier that the quartz was derived from subduction in the area, and we now know that the pyrite and gold came from black smokers in the ancient Pacific Ocean millions of years before these terrains were accreted and metamorphosed. As the concentrated hydrothermal fluids made their way through fractures, cracks, and faults in these accreted terrains, they left quartz veins rich in gold behind. These quartz veins would eventually become the lodes of these orogenic deposits. These veins of gold known as lodes are the sources of all of the placer gold that was found via panning in rivers downstream from the veins. You may have heard the term bonanza, and bonanzas are seemingly random clusters of gold and quartz veins that people would go after during the gold rush. The Sierra Buttes are one of California's richest mountains, as over $1 billion worth of gold was extracted from mines on the mountain, including the Sierra Buttes Mine and the historic Kentucky Mine, which you can actually tour today. California's largest gold nugget, Monumental, was extracted from the Sierra Buttes Mine in 1869, weighing in at a colossal 109 pounds. If you found a gold nugget of that size today, you'd instantly become a multi-millionaire. The current price of gold is over $3,300 per ounce, and 109 pounds is 1,744 ounces. Hence, if we do the math, that 109 pound gold nugget would be worth over $5.8 million today. If I had $5.8 million, I would be a happy man. This psychology is exactly what drove hundreds of thousands of people to the hills of the Sierra Nevada during the 1850s with the hope of striking it rich, but more on that in a future video. 
The gold of the Sierra Buttes can be found in both the Sierra Buttes Formation and the Shoe Fly Complex, mainly in faults, fissures, and cracks in the rocks where gold-bearing quartz veins intruded these planes of weakness. The Kentucky and Sierra Buttes mines are located within the Sierra Buttes Formation on the south side of the mountain. If you take a trip out there, who knows, maybe you'll be the next one to strike it rich. The Sierra Buttes are an absolutely stunning mountain in the northern reaches of the Sierra Nevada that offers visitors many things to treasure. These include an interesting geologic history that sheds light on the greater geology of California and North America, billions of dollars worth of gold, stunning views, and beautiful forests to hike in. Hopefully you learned a thing or two about California's mountain of gold and enjoyed doing so. If you haven't already, please consider liking and commenting on the video, as well as subscribing to my channel, as it really helps me to get more content like this out to y'all. Thanks for watching, and as always, PEACE! Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Solomon's Outdoor Adventures. If you enjoy content like this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel, and check out some of our other adventures right here. As always guys, thanks again and peace!